In last week's video, I looked at how to do a dark mode using a media query to follow system preferences. In this video, we're going to be doing a little button to go back and forth. But the cool thing with this is, even if the person visits a day later, a week later, a month later, it will remember the setting they used. We're using local storage for this one and making a little button here that we can toggle back and forth. Let's jump right into it. All right, so let's get started here and just to take a really quick look at what I've done. I have this button that I have right here with the, the click here that's going to become our toggle. Right now it is not doing anything. If we come and take a quick look at it, I have my button set up right here. So there's the button. It is with an SVG. I have the class of dark mode toggle on it, an ID of dark mode toggle. Um, I've also put an area label on here of toggle dark mode because, well, there's nothing indicating really what that button should do. We don't have a label on it or any text that's inside this button, so it is not too clear. So because of that, I have put my area label on there. Um, one thing I have done here is on the SVG itself, I have put the fill as current color, which we can see right there. Um, this one's really simple. It's just the outside of that icon. So this is going to match the text color. If you don't want it to do that, the uh, text here, click here. I didn't want to bring another font in. So I just did that as an SVG that, you know, it's a, a font that I outlined and turned into an SVG. That one has the var foreground as its fill. So if I change my CSS custom property here of foreground, it's going to switch. Or if I just change my text color on my whole page it will also um, it would also switch so right now my current color is my foreground so they're both the same but I just wanted to show you two different ways that we could uh, set the color on it to switch around they are both fantastic uh, the real focus of this is going to be the JavaScript though and not the CSS side of things but just really fast what I have done I have all my colors set here in the root on custom properties as well as my fonts that are down here and what we've done is very similar to when I did it with the system preferences. I've set them all up there, but the difference is instead of using a media query to switch them, I have a class here that is going to switch them all when we turn that class of dark mode on, on our body. So let's see how we can do this. Um, what the very first thing we have to do is create a JavaScript file. So let's just come into here and I'm going to, and we'll call it dark mode.js. And the very first thing we'll do is come into my index file here, just come all the way to the bottom. This is all just the SVG stuff, but right down here, we'll add in a script. And SRC will be equal to dark mode.js, just like that. Uh, so we can come in now and open up that file and start working on it. I shouldn't need to get into my CSS at all. The main thing I'm doing here is toggling a class on and off, but we also want to be able to save the pref. The really important thing here, uh, less so of the toggling things on and off, what I really want to focus on in this video is how we can save the preference for the person. So if somebody visits your site again, it will be on the last thing that they chose. And we're going to be doing that with something called local storage. And local storage is really, really awesome. So we're going to do a let dark mode equal local storage. I'm going to explain local storage in a second, just in case you don't know it. Get item. We're going to say dark mode. Just like that. So what, what this is, or what local storage is, is I'm sure you've, you know of cookies. Local storage is kind of similar, um, but it, it allows only the saving of key value pairs in the browser. And it also stores that with no expiration date, which is pretty cool. Uh, it also gives us an available size of five megabytes, which is tons of room. I don't think you'd need five megabytes, but it is there and accessible. Cookies are generally really small and like a couple of kilobytes in size. Uh, but the really big distinction between a cookie and a uh, the local storage is it the data is never sent back to the server. This is only as the name implies, it's only stored locally on the computer. There's also session storage, which it will only last until that session. As soon as the person session is finished, that data is gone. Whereas local storage will hang on to it, as I said, without any expiration date. So if you're not sure if you need a cookie or if you need to use local storage, generally it's if the server side needs the data for some reason, then you might need a cookie. Whereas if it's only client side, as it is in this case, then we don't need to use a cookie. We only need to use local storage. This also for privacy concerns, you know, you wouldn't have to technically run a cookie warning or anything like that uh, for GDPR or any concerns like that. If you're only using local storage, everything is only stored on the person's computer. This information is never sent out to the server. It's local, so there's no concerns about security or anything like that. What we're doing here is we want to see if in their local storage they have something called a dark mode and what the settings for that dark mode are. The other thing we do need to do is we, we have a button here that we need to be able to interact with. Uh, so I'm going to say const dark mode toggle is equal to document.query 
selector. And in this case, I had it as an ID of dark mode toggle, like that. Boom, there we go. So now we can interact with that button and we can do things when we click on, when we click on our button, we, we're gonna need to reference that. Cool, so before we can actually do anything with it, you know, what's going to happen when we click on it? So let's test just to make sure that worked. If you're ever doing anything JavaScript wise, especially if you're new to JavaScript, you should be just testing to make sure everything you do is, is actually working. So let's set that up right away. Uh, let's do an uh, uh, dark mode toggle, add event listener, and we're gonna throw a click event listener on there. Now I'm gonna use an arrow function for this. Uh, so I'm actually for now just gonna put parentheses and then I'm gonna do my arrow. So, and then my curly braces like that. And then inside of here, I can put my function. So for the moment, let's just see, let's just do like a nice console log of test and see if anything comes up. Uh, so I'm going to just open up my dev tools. We're going to do an inspect element on there and open up my console. And when we click on that, there we go. We can see test. And every time I click on it, it is firing. So the number there keeps going up. Perfect. So I know it is working. Uh, one thing you might've noticed, I put single quotations and they all of a sudden turned into double quotations. That's just because I have prettier on and it is set to have double quotations on there. Um, so we know that my dark mode toggle is there, it is working. We don't really need it to, to test that anymore, so we can delete that because we know that that is working. But when we click on it, obviously we don't want it just to run test, we want it to do something. What do we want it to do? We have a few things that we're gonna need to do, right? We need to check if uh, dark mode is enabled. If it's enabled, we want to uh, turn it off. If it's disabled, turn it on, right? That's all the things we need to do when we click. So instead of doing everything in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a few different things here. So let's do a const of enable dark mode. And again, we're gonna do this with arrow functions. And the advantage of doing it this way is if we need to use our enable dark mode in several different places, we can. Whereas if we built it all into here, it's only going to work when I click on it. So by pulling it out and making it something that I can use here, um, it, it's reusable as many times as I want, which is super useful because we're gonna have to do that a little bit later on. Uh, so for my enable uh, dark mode, how can we enable dark mode? Well, first we need to, uh, the first step we need to do is add the class dark mode to the body. And the second thing we're gonna do is we need to update dark mode in the local storage, right? So that we know that that's what the new setting is for the next time somebody comes. So number one here, let's do that first. Document, this is the easy one. Body class list add dark mode. And then number two, if the, then we need to update the local storage. So local storage, and this is, we're gonna do something a little bit different here. We're gonna say set item. So up here we did a get item. So we went into our local storage and we got the item dark mode to check what it was. This time we're gonna set the item. So we're gonna say we're, but we need to know what item are we setting first of all. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to set the item dark mode. And this can be literally anything. You can create any name you want here for your local storage. So whatever item you're setting, just, you know, you give it a name. And then what do we want to set it to? We want to set it to enabled. Again, this is a state that I'm putting on it. It's a string. You can see it's in quotation marks. It's not like this special thing that you need to follow. I'm just putting a string in here, but it makes it easy for me to know that by writing enabled, you know, it's pretty straightforward. My dark mode is set to enabled. Um, and this is what I'd mentioned at the very beginning, we can store key value pairs. So my key is dark mode and the value is set to enabled right now. Now we also need to have something that's going to be the opposite. So let's copy this and paste it because we're lazy and it'd be called disable, disable dark mode. And in this case, we want it to remove the class of dark mode. And of course here we want to set it um, we could set it to none, but I'm just going to set it to null. Just so it's, this sort of sets it to on or off in a way. By having a null here, it just means, no, we, we, it doesn't really actually have a value on it. Um, you could, we could definitely set it to disabled or something else there as well in how I'm going to use this. And I think it would work just fine. 
Um, so let's go and do this. So let's set all of this up. We want to come into our function and we want to check first. So we want to say if dark mode. So if it's not equal to enabled, um, and the nice thing with this is it could be like literally anything. So if it's not uh, set to enabled, what should we do? Well, in that case, we want to enable, and did I spell that right? Enable dark mode. So let's see if that works. Let's save that. And we have dark mode is not enabled right now. So it's not enabled. When I click on that, it should switch. Fantastic, it worked. And now when I click, nothing is happening because we need it to switch back. So here I can do else disable dark mode. Um, this also makes it a little bit easier. Remember when I said we pulled, I wasn't including these in my click function here. Um, again, we might need to use them in other situations, but the nice thing with this also, when we're reading our event listener here, it's super obvious what's happening. If dark mode is not enabled, enable it and else disable it. Even though I just added this, it's still not working. And to figure out why, the easy thing to do here is to um, console log, console log dark mode. So we can see what dark mode is giving us. And let's put this on both of them. So we, no matter what happens, we're always getting it. And it's gonna make a lot of sense uh, in one second. So the page refreshed. And now when I click here, you can see that dark mode is currently set to enabled. Well, that's interesting because every time I click, it's not, it's not really dark here. Let's refresh my page and, and see what happens now. And I click, well, it's switched, but now, now it's set to null. And every time I click, it's still set to null. Well, that, that's weird, right? Well, not really, actually. W what's happening is it's going back to this. So this, we're setting our dark mode up here. We're saying let dark mode is local storage get item dark mode. But this is only firing when the page loads. So when my page is loading, so we refresh, my page loads, and even let's do it right here. So console, console log dark mode. So let's see what happens now when my page refreshes, dark mode's enabled. So every time I click on this, it's just gonna keep saying it's enabled. Because even though we're changing it, because even though we're technically switching it here, it's not getting that information again. Because even though here, uh, here we're changing dark mode to be null, and then here we're changing it to be enabled. So technically it actually is switching. The problem is it's the local storage that's switching and not my variable that I created here. This variable is set to whatever it was on page load. Well, that, that's a bit of a problem because we obviously want it to be able to switch all the time. So that's why it's only when I refresh my page that it seems to actually have a bit of an effect on there. So what we need to do is we need to update this dark mode every time someone clicks on it. So here, doo -doo -doo, inside of my event listener, we can also do, before we check to see the state of my dark mode, we want to update it. So here we can say that my dark mode, and this is gonna look really similar, dark mode is equal to local storage dot, you can guess it, get item, get item, uh, dark mode. And once again, we have to do this every time we click because we're saving this as a variable. And this variable wasn't getting updated before, now we're updating that variable every time we click. We don't have to we don't have to redeclare like let equals or whatever like that. We've already declared our variable here. We're just updating what our variable actually is. And it's also why I didn't do it as a const. It's why I did it as a let so it would be able to be changed over time. So now if I click here, you can actually see it's going to switch back and forth. Cool, right? I think that's pretty awesome. So now we can switch back and forth. It's doing its job, except if I'm in dark mode and I refresh my page, we're coming back and we're not in dark mode. Huh, well, that's no good. Um, and this is actually the reason that I didn't only have this dark mode variable inside of my event listener. It's because we want to know when the page loads what this is. So it's really, really important to know when the page loads, did they, have the enabled dark mode on a previous visit to this page. So what we can do is we have our enable dark mode or disable dark mode. But before we get to our event listener here, what we can do is say if 
dark mode is equal to enabled. Uh, we want to enable dark mode. That makes sense, right? So if dark mode's setting is equal to enabled, we need to enable it, right? It, it means it should be on. So this means when the page loads that we should either have dark mode enabled or disabled. So now you can see as soon as I save that, dark mode was currently enabled, so my browser immediately switched it. So if I click, we can go back to light. If I refresh my page, we should be in light mode. But then if I go to my dark mode and I refresh, it's going to stay in dark mode this time. Whereas if I take this off, when my page refreshes, that's gone. And it's not paying attention on page load. So that's really important why I had this at the very top here is because I do need to have this checked as soon as the page is load, as soon as the page loads and if it is set to dark, so I'm checking right away, I'm saying, let's get this and let's see if it is set to enabled. If it's set to enabled from a previous time that somebody visited it, we're going to enable my dark mode. A pretty much perfect use case for local storage here in this case. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't see the last one, in that one, instead of doing a, a toggle button where we're setting it one way or the other, I looked at how you can do it with your system preferences and a simple media query. So I'd encourage you to check that video out. I really hope you liked this video. It was a ton of fun to make. I really enjoyed this one. I learned a few things along the way as well. Thank you very much to my patrons for helping make all of this possible. You guys are amazing. And of course, until next time, forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.